I know it's hard to understand the way my life is with these birds and especially how I live. This did not happen overnight. It was a process. And for me to learn the gravity of their situation, it took a long time for me to really understand it. I could have chose another life and ignored this problem, but I know what I am doing is the right thing to do, no matter how uncomfortable and weird it may be. I've made terrible decisions that really impeded the progress of what I'm trying to do here. And I do get really down thinking I'm never gonna get anywhere and what am I doing? And I wish I could walk right by them and it didn't matter, but I can't. And I'm telling things the way they happened. And nothing is sugar-coated or embellished. After this arrest in um, 2013, this was in the news, and two lesbians that I had known when I was in federal prison called me to grow marijuana with them legally in Temecula, California. <laughs> I gave it zero thought. I just said yes. When all the officers were on my property, probably over 30, and uh, they were like this when they would pull up. Oh my God, the birds are loose and freaked out. But they should be freaked out if they were in cages. If they pulled up here and saw 30 birds sitting in cage after cage, that should freak them out not 30 birds that are free running around. I did not transport the birds in one of those pet carriers. I put these perches up in the Airstream and I rode in the back with them. Look at this pet carrier. See the arrows pointing to that box? This photo somehow makes it look large, but that was kind of like a shoe box width and maybe a boot size length, not long of a boot either. Like his tail was squished in there. He couldn't turn around, his, open his wings and that little breathing hole. And then that lady right there, they're unloading it. First, she's trying to talk to me about my, about whatever. And then, and then I'm like, uh, can I get the bird out first? The bird was just secondary to her. She tells me how they drove from Vegas and they stopped on the way and they ate at the winery. And I'm just horrified. And to get the bird out, they had to move a bunch of stuff because he was at the bottom of this Hummer that she was driving. And that's how people transport these birds. They want them, to insist on them being in the carriers and whatnot, and they say it's for the bird's safety. Whatever. Yeah, it's safer for you to ride in the trunk of a car. When I was in Temecula, the house I was purchasing needed some work before it was habitable. So I lived in this Quonset hut with my birds. And um, the lesbians, they had a, it's a decent ranch house. I mean, it should be totally redone. It still has single pane windows, but um, I prefer to stay in this Quonset hut, even though it had no electricity or plumbing. And I was stressed leaving Nevada and putting the birds in the trailer. And I forgot my overnight bag. So I arrived in Temecula with no drugs and thought nobody will bring me drugs up in the hills here. So I just better do it. So I started cold turkeying it. And I don't know, I think it's different for everybody who's getting off drugs, what you go through. But for me, simple tasks are impossible. Like answering my phone is hard. Um, brushing my teeth is hard. Anything is just difficult. So this house right here, 
I was, I sold a piece of art that I had, a Lichtenstein. I had a couple hundred thousand dollars. And I, one of the lesbians, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want it. Just put it in your name and we'll sort it out later. Because I needed the house for me and my birds. And I just could not, I couldn't read papers or sign anything. I was feeling so crappy. So she did it. She, um, I paid the money and she put it in her name. And I know I'm an idiot the way I did everything, but I, after all, I was doing business with them. I moved there and we were growing marijuana together. So there has to be some level of trust. After I paid for everything to make the house habitable, was getting comfortable with my birds, the lesbians, they started in on me. They wanted me off the property. They wanted my house. That's inside my closet at Temecula. That's Paul. And right below him is his mate, Golly, who laid eggs. Now, my birds have laid eggs. Not every year someone lays eggs, and they just haven't hatched. They're not fertile. I'm not into breeding. I definitely uh, don't want to contribute to this problem. And um, having more and more birds is not my goal. Freedom is the goal. Yes, the lesbians needed money and I was paying for things with my couple hundred grand from the art piece of art. But putting the house in Judy's name was just by far one of the stupidest things I've ever done. And these lesbians were determined to take my house from me. They wanted my house and they were just awful. Here is an incident where they were accusing me of stealing their marijuana, which they know I did not do. I live with my birds next door to them. And you cannot be growing pot illegally. This is illegal pot grows, and we're protecting ourselves from it. Go ahead and film us, bitch. We're, we've got you guys on tape too. That's what you don't understand. It's so fucking funny. Make sure you learn that and know it. I told you to get rid of them, you didn't, so. Thank you for getting rid of them. You think you're so funny? I don't Tearing like marijuana. No shit, bitch. We, have a, we, we found somebody who saw you stealing our pot plants last and night. And I have them on tape because James put that videotape in there. I know. <laughs> I hope there is a video. And I happen to know who your brother is, and I've still got his rap, and I'm gonna have him in trouble too. Call the cops, come here. Yeah, call the cops, you fucking whore. I don't like marijuana. <laughs> they were nonstop. And how about this? They are a legal 501c3. It's called Freedom Ranch. They are complete fraud and phonies. This one right here, she had a 30 year prison sentence. That's a life sentence. And she did not rob a bank with a gun. So whatever paperwork she did at that bank, she got a life sentence, 30 years. But she got out earlier for some reason. And now this one right here, Judy, she was methamphetamine cook and dealer, total meth lab drug dealer. Low, low life though, never lived large. I was really hating myself, like why did I get in this mess? Why did I put my house in her name? And I was overwhelmed, I was so stressed. And then I get news that my father died. I don't care what anyone says or does. There's nothing that can prepare you for that moment. Nothing in life. I went to Los Angeles for a few days for my father's services. And when I came back, this bird, Golly, her eggs hatched. 
Now in this video, I'm gonna show you, I'm in the closet where she is with her babies and she wants me to leave. So she's telling me bye bye, but she's saying get out. I love her, all her expressions. And every time I would go in to shower or use the bathroom, I would say to her, hi, hi babies. And she started saying it to her babies, hi babies, it was the cutest thing on earth. Look at those things, they look like weird dinosaurs. And it's weird how they're so ugly and then they turn to the most beautiful kind of opposite of humans. I found out the lesbians were calling local rescues trying to place my birds. And I love it. They call, call themselves Freedom Ranch. And they're 501c3 when they're not doing, they are total frauds. And they're trying to place all my birds in rescues so they'll spend their life in a cage. So when I heard they were trying to place my birds, I decided I better get them back to Nevada and I rented this passenger van and my friend Jay drove it and got the babies in there and everybody's in there. I left my home with everything in it there. Of course, the lesbians went in and helped themselves to anything they want of mine, destroyed my car. Um, it was unfortunate what they did. And I could be wrong, but I think that maybe there was millions of dollars to make in a legal way instead of what they did by stealing my house and my possessions. Oh, the mother rejected one of the babies, so my friend Jessica Steindorf raised it, and I'll talk about that another time. But these two here, that's Ernie and Detta. And I named them that because they reminded me of those Sesame Street characters. Except when I learned that Bert was a girl, I'm thinking, okay, Bert, Bertranda, Benedetta, Detta. So that's how I came up with the name Detta. I never got bored of watching them, ever. It was beautiful watching the mother and father raise them. They might be the only macaw family in the United States that is free and got to raise their own young free without any interference. It was an incredible experience watching them grow up. I never got bored. Of course, they were inseparable. When Jessica went away with Serena Williams, Tesla joined us. It was beautiful. They would explore everything. Every day there was something new on Facebook about them. The community loved them. The way that they greeted each day with such a inquisitive innocence and curiosity and excitement. It was such a burst of positivity. One morning they left and only Ernie returned. I got that awful feeling, just a, just a sickening feeling. I knew something was really wrong. She did not just vanish from this earth. Somebody out there knew something. Someone had her, someone saw something. So I put the word out and then I'm gonna cut it short. Around 10 o'clock at night, 
a girl called me and said, some lady has your bird and it's hurt and needs, she's been trying to find the owner and the vet all day, which immediately is a lie. But anyways, I met her on the highway at 10 o'clock at night and she handed me a cardboard toilet paper box and my bird, my beautiful bird was in that little box. Look what they did to my bird, my beautiful girl. Look what they did to her. I want to burn their house down with their kids in it. For what? Why would they do this to this beautiful bird to not just let her go with what? Because they want to put her in their living room, in their garage, and keep it in a cage? Why would they do that? I would love to string that lady up on my car and just drag her on the highway. I would love it. She was in so much pain. She couldn't walk. She kept falling over and falling over, and I could see her pain. So I waited and I left her. I thought maybe she'd calm down at home. She'd be okay, but it was more severe. So the next day, I made that weird thing, and I had to bring her to the vet. And her brother, Ernie, he was freaking out, trying to get her attention, trying to get in the car, trying to get in the car, see him. And of course, you know, I'm driving that Prius because the lesbians owe $15,000 in damage to my car. It was an awful experience. Every time I look at her, I think of the pain that she had to go through with all that for no reason. And luckily, they're able to repair her wing. It took a couple surgeries, weird wraps on her wing. It was just a horrific experience. That awful experience does not mean I need to keep them in cages and locked inside. It means I must do a better job of communication and spreading the word about their freedom and to leave them alone. Because in one of the craziest cities in the entire world has to be Caracas, Venezuela. It's an insane city. Everyone probably has agreement on. Well, in that crazy city in Venezuela, they have macaws that are free right in the city, and they call them angels. And they sleep on rooftops, satellite dishes, antennas, and people put food out, and it's beautiful. So if they could figure this out in Caracas, Venezuela, Look how beautiful that is, those blue and golds on the antenna. They're free. And in some articles, they say that in a city full of chaos, these birds bring harmony. And it's really not asking much that to give them the opportunity to be free when you do not want them.